Asimov and, you know, reading some sci-fi stuff. But after defying punk and recording five albums of classic prog, our silken-clad Canucks decided to hang up their prog gym jams. Closer to the heart. Yes, closer to the heart. I think it became boring for us to continue to do 20-minute sides. Yeah, I know people find that hard to believe. No, they don't. Rush rolled up their sleeves and wrote a hit single for the 80s. Prog classicists were aghast. Top man jackets, ponytails, the horror. Today, they've all gone solo, but the Rush brand of pragmatic prog survived well into the 90s. Sometimes it's dark, sometimes it's not so dark, sometimes it's funky, sometimes it's not so funky, and sometimes, you know, it's a train wreck. Indeed, and across the suburbs of Toronto, usually on a Thursday, there are those who try to capture that elusive sound. This is the Rush tribute band YYZ, playing us out with YYZ. Next, the Zippy, Bungle and Jeffrey of Prague. They were huge. They were wild. They were three blokes that had their own lorries. Keith Emerson, keyboards. Greg Lake, guitar and vocals. OK, let's like clear this room. Carl Palmer, drums and percussion. One soft one, one hard one. What the use is that? What's the matter about? Brian Flowers. Personal roadie to the band. Emerson! Right! And... Bobby! Maybe LP are the quintessential progressive rock act. Absolutely fantastic stuff. because they just didn't give a damn. That's what's so great about them, they didn't give a damn. Whoa. They were the richest man in the world making this music that was bonkers and great. decided to have our names painted on the top of the trucks. No one could see it unless you're in a helicopter. I mean, you know, it wasn't like to be flash for the sake of being flash. It was all done with the utmost taste, I think. They were the richest men in the world. They were rich as Croesus. They were carried around on winged horses with Nubian slave girls feeding them drugs from a golden plate. Well, sort of. pretentious in the dictionary, you could possibly see a picture of Emerson, Lake and Palmer. In the late 60s, Keith Emerson tinkled the ivories for prog pioneers the nice, but he was thinking of bigger things. He had a vision of how the world should be. I realised that the three-piece format was working very well. Uh, keyboards, bass, drums. Um, and I wanted to um, get the best um, goddamn three-piece in the world. 
Keith set to work. Take Greg Lake from King Crimson on bass and vocals. Add Carl Palmer, drummer with the crazy world of Arthur Brown and Atomic Rooster. Give them a name like a bunch of accountants and let rip. Well, almost. Still, Keith was holding his end up with a show-stopping prog removal man from hell routine. My responsibility um, was to be kind of a front man instrumentally. But it's very difficult to be a front man with a 350 pound Hammond organ. But I found a way around that. It's to put the knives in, leave the knives in it, and they walk off stage, and just a single spot on this unholy noise coming from this Hammond organ with a knife sticking out of it. Now, I'm, you know, I'm sure Oasis are pretty good in their own way, but they don't leave knives sticking out of instruments and leave the stage. It was wonderful. They throw knives. That's one of the reasons why I got the gongs, because it was one way of shielding myself in case one of these knives ricocheted out of the box over to the drums, which they did on many occasions. Carl had the gong, and he had a bell that used to hang here, right? And at one time, so he's doing the drum solo, and at one point, he would take the bell between his teeth and go, and bang the gong with his head. He would do this, honestly. If you had a tub around him, you could throw your washing in. He was, and we used to sit and think, wow, he's using his teeth and everything. Let's wait for Mr. Lake. Keith Emerson's got all his banks of gear. Carl Palmer's got his gong and this 52-piece drum kit. Greg Lake, hang on, I've only got his guitar. I want what everybody else has got. So what does he do? He gets himself a 2,000-pound Persian carpet. He stood on this carpet and people liked it because he was the only guy who ever stood on his own carpet. ELP were the behemoths of prog but like all great civilizations, took one step too far. The orchestra. Financially, it was just crippling. It was just, it was just, if there was one empty seat, we were losing, we were losing money anyway. In 1977, they came in from the cold. But Punk was battering at the gates of the Citadel of Prague. There was this guy called John Peel, who's got this radio st show that he has, which, you know, the music just amazes me. But he said something really stupid, like, Emerson, Lake and Palmer is a waste of talent and electricity. I mean, he must be eating his words now, this man. I was right then, and I'm right now. ELP went their separate ways in 1978, reformed and split up again. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never ends. I'm so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. There behind the glass, there's a real... But one of their biggest fans has kept the flame burning. Welcome back, my friends, to the show that never Nick, ends. Nick. We're so glad you could attend. Come inside, come inside. What are you going to sing? Well, I... I know what you're going to sing. You're going to sing a lullaby, but why a lullaby? because I've always been a fan of a great band called Emerson, Lake and Palmer. Look at that moon shine so bright And tonight he smiles Especially for you Sleep tight Sleep It was totally excessive. It really was. I mean, we, were, we burned ourselves out. We spent every penny we had doing what we believed in. And I wouldn't change it for a heartbeat. To the Italians, they were si. To the French, oui. To Kurt and Heidi, ya. Yeah. To the enigmatic people of Tibet, casa. But in any language, they meant full-on prog lunacy. If you look over there, you'll see Chris. Just move over there. That's Christopher. Well, I expect you're wondering why we're here tonight, quite honestly. 